All right, today I thought I would show you how to make a couple of different kinds of potatoes. We've got russets, Yukon golds, and some little red potatoes. So stay tuned and see how easy these are to make. All right, let's make some red potatoes. So this is just a, a red potato I pulled out of my pantry. I just randomly grabbed it out of the bin. This is a, a rather large red potato. They start at, you know, little tiny and go up to about here. But by having one in our hands, we can, we can see a couple things. We can get a size. This is about as big as I'd want it to be. We get a shape. It's round, but it's, it's kind of flat. And it's got eyes in it. That's what these little dents are called. And we see the color, but we also see the potato itself isn't the red. It's just the skin. So let's start making some potatoes made some clay. This is my base clay for most of my potatoes. It's equal parts white female and transparent white female. And then just a touch of yellow ochre just so it's not so white. And I've got chalk all over my board here so that's what you're seeing it pick up. But that's what we're going to coat it in so it'll be okay. So I rolled a snake and I'm going to cut little pieces off the snake. And normally I would make a long snake and I'd cut a whole bunch of them at a time. I'm just going to do a few right now. Then I make balls. I roll all of those little pieces into balls. And if you were going to make little tiny red potatoes, you'd obviously just cut smaller pieces, that's all. Next, we need to add some eyes to them. I use a toothpick. And I just kind of randomly poke some dents in it. And um, let's move on to our paper plate. Actually, I like to put them right into one of the holes on my little palette that I use to do my chalking in. So let's put some holes, put some eyes in these, and drop them in there. And I try not to put more than about three per little little um, section in there. So I'll have two in one and three in the other one. And I leave one at least one of the areas without potatoes because I like to mix my chalk and then use it on the potatoes. Now our base color. Our main color we're using is this kind of brick red. It's close to the color of our potato skin. And I experimented with several combinations. And today I'm just using my dental tool because my knife that I usually use is on my other work table. And then I found that by itself was just a little too dark, so I add some pink chalk to it. And I made a couple of batches like this, and I just they weren't quite right. And I realized we needed one more color. We need just a touch of purple. By adding just the touch of purple, and then we mix this all up. And just take what's on the brush and roll your potatoes. And that's really all you need. And don't let your potatoes hide from you in your brush. They like to climb up inside the bristles. And uh, all of a sudden you'll only have one in there and you say, where did my other potato go? But once I added the purple chalk to the mixture of chalk, I was really happy with how these came out. We don't want too much chalk because too much and they don't look right. So I'm just going to mat on our paper plate. And I'll bake these off. And when they get baked off, they're going to look like these. And you can see I've got a couple of different colors as I was trying to get my colors right. So it's oops, wrong way. Where's, there it is. Let's see, we have a whole basket of red potatoes. So I'll go bake these off and add them to here, and we'll make another type of potato. All right, let's move on to some baking potatoes. Baking potatoes can be really huge or smaller or even smaller than this. I brought both of these because I wanted to show you there's, there's a lot of variety in these. When we look at the shape of these, the, where the red potato was more of a round, flat ball, this, these are much more oblong shaped. They're 
definitely longer than they are around. And they're, they're not perfect. They've got eyes in them, they've got bumps, they've got marks. So those are things to keep in mind when we're making them in miniature. So for this I'm using the same clay mixture. This is, remember on the red potatoes it was equal parts white and transparent white just a touch of yellow ochre clay. My tray is still damp. So <laughs> roll it out. And I measured my potatoes. The biggest one was about six inches long and about three inches in diameter. So we can make our potatoes quite a range of sizes. So roll out a snake and cut pieces off that snake. And cut them a little bit random especially if you're making I'm making a big basket of potatoes so I want mine kinda random in size then I go through and I roll all of these potatoes into balls again if you're only doing one or two it doesn't make as much difference but if you're baking a lot of something it helps to do as much of each step at a time as you can It just takes a minute. And these balls don't need to be perfect. In fact, we don't want them perfect. We want them a little bit craggy and have some flaws in them. Because if you look at potatoes at the grocery store or the farmer's market, they're, they're not perfect. They've got all kinds of divots and stuff in them. All right, now those are all round. So now we take them and we kind of make them skinnier. Let me do that. Let's go down a little closer. There's the pin. So take a ball, roll it in the palm of my hand. I find it works better in the palm of my hand than on the tray. On the tray, I was getting kind of, uh, my shapes were getting too uniform. And some of them can be longer and skinnier, some of them can be shorter and fatter. <clears throat> some can be just absolutely huge. Some can be pointed on the ends, and some can be round on the ends. Not very pointed, but a little pointed. And what I like to do, if I get all of these done, just take me a minute. All right, now I take my little chalking palette. This is just a typical paint palette. Let's back the camera up just a little bit so you can see it. And this one has six openings in it. What I do is I use one opening for my chalk. And I'm using a combination of a yellow ochre and kind of a medium brown. I found that by itself the brown just wasn't quite right. And for this whole video, I am using the Artist Loft chalks from um, Michaels. They're inexpensive, they've got tons of colors in there, so that's what I'm using for all the potatoes. And we take our toothpick again, and we make some marks, make some holes, make some lines. And what I like to do on these potatoes, because they're bigger, I drop one per opening that doesn't already have the chalk in it. I leave that, that one of them for the chalk, and that way I can, I can chalk five of them at a time. I use my brush and I mix those two colors of chalk together, pick up just a little bit, and I roll it around. If you don't have a palette, I think you could probably do the same thing by putting your potatoes out on your paper plate and using one side of your paper plate for your chalk. I might try that with the next type of potatoes. When we get, we're going to do Yukon Golds yet. I might try that with those and see how well that works. And I like having the two colors of chalk because it doesn't completely mix together so we get a little variety in the color on our potatoes. When I move these over, I've got a paper plate sitting over here underneath the camera. Pick out again and 
make random marks. And yeah, you're going to pick up chalk on your fingers. I have a wet wipe here so that I don't get chalk all over everything as I'm working. Let's color this batch of potatoes. Once again, dip in the chalk and just roll them around. I like to do them this way rather than trying to hold them when I'm trying to do all sides of an object like these potatoes because I want it relatively even on all sides. But I also found that when I tried putting the potatoes into the, the basin that had the chalk in it, I got too much. And that didn't look good either. This seems to get just about the right amount of chalk. Alright, so I think you see how this works. I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to chalk the rest of these, finish up some more potatoes, and then I'll be back. Alright, so here's our batch of potatoes all baked off. Here's what I've already done, so we'll put those in the basket. Those turned out pretty cool. Now I baked these for about seven minutes because they're a little bigger than some of our other things we've made lately. I will, when I get done with all my potatoes, then I'm going to glue all the potatoes into their baskets with some TLS and bake that together. I've had a few questions about why I use TLS as opposed to glue. And although I've answered those privately, I thought I'd answer it here too. It's because these potatoes, especially on things like these, they're not shiny at all and glue gets really really shiny and also the TLS bonds more permanently and better with the cooked femo. It's always hard to get a glue to really adhere to femo and really hold it in place. So that's our russet potatoes. So now we've got two. We've got our russets and we've got our little red potatoes. Let's move on and do some Yukon Gold potatoes. Okay let's move on to Yukon Gold potatoes. These are a really pretty potato because they are a lot more yellow the flesh of these is more yellow even after it's cooked. And so I changed the base color of my clay. I took the same base as we had before, the equal parts of white and translucent. But then I got out some Primo cadmium yellow and added just a little bit at a time until I got this really pale, pale yellow color, which is now picking up everything on the tray. So let's start making potatoes. Oh, let's look at our shape first. These are more round, and they've got just a little bit of a, a coating on the outside, a color that's darker. So let's, let's make a few potatoes. Again, we'll make a snake. These are about the same size as our red potatoes, so, but they vary. They can go pretty tiny up to a little bit bigger than this one I've got here. So just keep them in that range. And once again, I mean, we make these potatoes pretty much the same as the others. It's just how we form. We start out the same. Because we've yellow, added the yellow primo to this, I've noticed my clay is much stickier than it was with just the Fimo. The primo is softer than the, even the soft Fimo, so it's making my clay more sticky. And once again, we're making little balls. I'm just going to do these few here for right now. And it's just easier to do, like I said in the other potatoes, it's easier to do each step all the way through than to start over with each potato. Now I have my, I'm, this time I'm just putting my chalk onto my potatoes on the, the baking plate. So again, we take our toothpick and we add some eyes and some dents and whatnot. But these are, I'm trying to keep these a little more browned than I did for the red potatoes. The red potatoes are more flat, almost disc-like compared to these.
And you know with these potatoes, if you accidentally shove your fingernail into one or, you know, pick it up and kind of bump it with your nail, it's okay. Because they've got all kinds of weird little bends. I mean, look at my potato. It's got this shape here. So they, they're not perfect. They are far from perfect. Now, let's get our chalk. And for this I'm using mostly yellow ochre. You know, fine dusting on the plate. And I found that with the yellow ochre it was just too bright. So I've got this, this is a little bit lighter brown than I used on the russet potatoes. Not quite as much of that. Take my brush, kind of, and kind of spread it out. And then just kind of roll your potatoes through the chalk until they're fairly well covered. The Yukon Gold potatoes really have a much more translucent quality to them than any of the others. So you want this outside coating to be pretty light. So that's all there is to it. I'm going to make some more potatoes. I'm going to bake these off again at 230 degrees. And these I'll bake for about five minutes because they're pretty small. When I get these and some more baked, I'll be back. All right, so I've got my potatoes all baked off. And I'll add those to the ones I made earlier. See if I can get them in the into my little basket. See if we've got enough to fill. I think we do now. Oh yeah. Looks like I made more than I need this time. Awesome. All right, so there's my potatoes. So we've got three varieties of potatoes and you can make more. Just use the same directions. Look at your potatoes that you've got on hand and Pick some chalk colors and clay colors and make the potatoes in the shape you need them. So I'm going to set up to um, and get these all fastened in. I'll use some TLS, translucent liquid sculpey, and then I will bake that and take some pictures and there will be pictures at the end of the video. So I hope you enjoyed this project. Um, it was a lot of fun making these. These were actually one of the more fun, fun videos I've done in a while. Uh, if you haven't found us on Facebook, be sure to do that. Be sure to check out the blog. Uh, most weeks the blog tells us a little bit more about the project than what I have time for in the video. And uh, I'll talk to you next week. Bye.